Hello, all my great, grand, glorious Leo friends. Hang on, let me get this. That's a little better. Welcome. This is Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer since what seems like forever. Um, I have your beautiful forecast in front of me, your April forecast. And um, before I jump into it, I want to respond to requests that I have received from Leonians about a spring special. If you go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com, you will find all the information you need to take advantage of my spring special. I have discounts on everything I offer. Um, I know that sometimes uh, we have to budget carefully and so things are discounted now. Okay, let's talk about your gorgeous forecast for the month of April. Oh, look at this. Oh, love it, love it. All right, let's start with Venus, the planet of love. Excuse me, my cat, who lets me live here and pay the mortgage, wants a little attention. Um, Venus, the planet of love and money and blessings, is in your seventh house of partnership. Um, and it has been there. Well, on the fifth, it moves into your eighth house. This is the house of um, psychic energy, transformation, magic. It deals with other people's money. It deals with transformation. And so any planet that moves into the eighth house is going to undergo a transformation. Your love nature, your concept about money, very, very powerful. The eighth house is a very powerful house and it's awesome. Now, Mars, the red planet, is also in that seventh house. And wherever Mars is, is what you throw yourself into. It's what comes first to you. It's what you fight with and fight for. And so we've got Venus and Mars, love and passion in the seventh house of partnership or the public. It doesn't mean a marriage or a business partnership. It means other people. On the 14th, Mars moves into your eighth house and your anger issues may increase as you become more passionate about them. Because the truth is that the eighth house is the house of secrets and what is buried. And so it's, it's stronger for having, for being kind of hidden behind a veil of secrecy from your own self. However, if you will just look at it, face it, your passion will be transformed. Can you do business with people at this time that involves money? Yes, absolutely. Make it win-win. Now let's look at the yellow planet, the sun, the giver of life. It has been in your ninth house of truth and the higher mind and long distance travel, it's the house of philosophies and concepts. And on the 19th, it moves into your 10th house of career. This is you moving into the top slot, whether it's with your family or in business. I love it. And this puts you in the leadership position. Okay. Now, Mercury is the blue planet. And I have to mention that Mercury will be retro retrograde in May. This month on the 26th, it moves into the shadow of the retrograde so that we feel as if it is retro. It's not, but it feels like it is. So uh, no, you're not going crazy if it feels like Mercury's retrograde. Just join me next month um, and we'll talk about Mercury going retrograde on the 10th. So Mercury's in your ninth house. You're thinking about your belief systems. You're thinking about travel. You're thinking about expanding your horizons. On the 10th, Mercury moves into your 10th house of career and public image and leadership. Remember, whatever you think about and put your attention on grows. 
So there's your public image growing. And on the 29th, Mercury moves into your 11th house of friends and group activities and philanthropic humanitarian projects. It's quite beautiful. Now we have three lunations, one of which is a solar eclipse. That's this month. All right, the new moon today, April 1st, is in 11 Aries 31. This means that the energy I just described about this ninth house starts growing today and gets bigger and bigger. Are you thinking of planning a trip? Are you going back to school? Are you writing and publishing a book? You know what I'm saying. All right. Two weeks later, we have a full moon on April 16th in 26 Libra 46. This is the third house of ideas. So your um, ideas blossom after the new moon shapes them uh, by showing you the big picture, showing you options you didn't know you had before, before helping you form your belief system and you'll be sharing those ideas on the full moon. Then the second new moon is April 30th. It is also a solar eclipse in 10 Taurus 38. Whenever we have an eclipse, it's like a cosmic two by four. Things start happening. We feel the effects of an eclipse uh, a good week to two weeks before it occurs. And it lasts until the next pair of eclipses come along, which is usually about five or six months later. So in May, we're gonna have another eclipse because of the eclipse pairs. So you wanna be sure and join me in May when I tie up that loose end. So we've got another eclipse, we've got Mercury retrograde, good grief. Join me next month. So until we meet again, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.